special guest popping in right now, Tulsi Gabbard, who's on the phone with us right now, obviously a, a seculo commentator, which we appreciate. And hey, New York Times bestseller. I got the book right here, For Love of Country. I always like to promote when I can. Tulsi, welcome back to the broadcast. Will, I wanted to pitch to you for this first segment as we head to Tulsi. Uh, there has been a lot of talk. I've seen it over the last, really, the last 24, 48 hours. Uh, I think headed towards the Olympics, even things, there was some discussion coming up about sort of terrorism starting to kind of be on the rise. And we know now that there was uh, some plots that were actually you know, planned out and they were thwarted, thankfully. But of course, uh, it comes with some big consequences. That's right. In three different cities, the U.S. Customs and uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, that's ICE as you normally know them, uh, they busted eight Tajikistan nationals that had come in through the southern border and were in Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and New York, yeah. and they were concerned that there was a terror plot imminent and they were picked up by ICE and... It, it's obviously concerning. Yeah, Tulsi, when you hear this news that eight suspected terrorists uh, were caught, obviously coming from over the border, uh, but they were already over the border. They had already made these plans, settled in, like Will said, three of our biggest cities to plot an attack. What does that make you feel? Someone I know who's serving our country uh, has been involved in the, in the fight against terror for a long time. Um, I just want to get your thoughts. What it makes me feel is is angry, but unfortunately, I can't tell you that I was surprised by this. There's two things that, that I'd, I'd love your viewers and your listeners to focus on as we look at this news. Number one is that none of us should be surprised that we have Islamist terrorists, whether they be from ISIS, Al-Qaeda, uh, Hezbollah, or any of these other Islamist terrorist organizations here in our country. When we have an open border policy, as we do under the Biden-Harris administration, uh, even with his recent executive order action, it is still an open border. Uh, this is what we can expect. I've been to the border several times and seen how people are coming across our border, hoping that they get encountered by the Border Patrol so that they can go through, as these eight from Tajikistan did, uh, get their white piece of paper that says they're claiming asylum, and they go out anywhere in the country where they want to go. Uh, this is a major national security risk and threat that faces us all and is a direct consequence of the Biden administration's enabling and supporting the cartels. The second thing is, when we look at the FBI, you know, we, we heard Director Ray, I think it was last week, pleading Congress for more money for the FBI because he's talking about this heightened domestic terrorist threat. Well, the two are directly linked. But we also need to look at where is the FBI spending their time and resources? Because you and I both know, and you guys are, are focused on some of these cases, where the FBI is being used to target our fellow Americans, law-abiding citizens who happen to be political opposition against Joe Biden and his administration. You know, we look at the, the peaceful pro-life protesters. We look at people exercising their right to free speech and freedom of expression, freedom of religion, and yet are being treated like criminals or even domestic terrorists and extremists by the Biden-Harris administration. We need our law enforcement to focus on those Islamist terrorist groups who actually pose a direct security threat to our country and not allow this continued abuse of power by the Biden administration to weaponize these entities and these law enforcement entities against our fellow Americans. Tulsi, one thing that we didn't hear a lot about uh, for the past few years was ISIS. They were decimated. Airstrikes were very effective against the group. And ever since Joe Biden has been back in office, you're starting to hear more and more about a resurgence in ISIS. And that is what uh, the ties of this group, the, these eight individuals that were arrested, they are saying they had ties to ISIS. Uh, is it concerning that ISIS may be finding a window here with the weakness of the United States on the global stage? There is a, a wide open window, quite frankly. And this is what happens if you remember early on in his presidency, Joe Biden declared an end to the quote unquote war on terror. Uh, well, guess what? The Islamist terrorists, whether it be ISIS, Al Qaeda or these other groups, they never stopped waging war against us. They're re reconstituting strategizing, continuing to spread their radical Islamist ideology to bring in more recruits into what is their ultimate goal, which is to establish an Islamist caliphate around the world. That is their goal, and it has been for hundreds of years. Just because Joe Biden declared an end to this war doesn't mean they stopped waging war. They've been doing it this whole time. 
And this is what has created this wide open window because Joe Biden and his administration let down their guard, putting us and our security and our safety at greater risk. You want to hear from, let's hear from Christopher Ray. This is from, uh, I think, what, just a few days ago? Right. This just is bite a six. few days ago. So you, this is what Tulsi referred to. We actually have the bites. So I want to make sure we uh, get to play it for our audience. We've seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole nother level. This is by no means a time to let up or dial back. Now, on top of that, increasingly concerning is the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland. Tulsi, I have a question. When you hear something like that, and then you also know that they were vetted and they were able to, to make their way up to this level of terror plot. Uh, is there a, a turning point here where you see an administration actually start taking real action? We know that they, uh, you know, allegedly, like you said, they they say they close the border, whatever that means. Um, or it, are we f- too far gone in terms of this administration? We are very far go- gone. I hate to say we're too far gone. I think, again, refocusing resources towards these, this radical Islamist terror threat that we know exists within our country is essential. Uh, you know, hearing, hearing Director Ray make these statements, uh, it, it's a little hard to take him seriously, given he is the same director who has said that Christian nationalists and white supremacists, uh, you know, that, that these are the, the greatest uh, uh, domestic threats that we face when we hear president biden say that maga republicans are the greatest domestic threat to democracy uh you know their their words don't carry much weight when we know that they are weaponizing these public institutions for their own political interests what he is saying about this increased foreign terrorist threat islamist terrorist threat is true but it's coming about as a direct result of their policies You know, this is another reason why this election is so important. We cannot trust these people with our safety or our freedom or our security, because when it comes right down to it, they will put their personal and political interests ahead of the interests of the country. We've got five five months to make this change. (laughs) We've got to make it happen. Tulsi Gabbard, thank you so much for joining us again. Her book, For Love of Country, is out. We always appreciate her views and opinions here on the Secular Broadcast. 